Welcome to the podcast, guys. Um, today we're talking school excursions. Nothing beat oh. getting on the bus and going, there isn't even a seatbelt on this thing. It's nothing better than just getting yeah. out of the school, am I right? Mm. Outside of those gates. And you then feel you naughty, run, don't you? You run off with your mates, your teacher doesn't know where you are. It's mm. just brilliant. No, that's not a school excursion. You feel alive. I feel alive. That's then wagging. You go steal, a, steal a car, <laughs> Ram Raider. Petrol station. That's not a school excursion. What? No, that's running wild. That's and That's where I grew up, south of Adelaide. That's breaking the law. Is this where you tell us a story about you being the getaway driver for a robbery job on a grog no, store? No, I did not do that Sorry. at all. I'm innocent. <laughs> Until proven guilty. Um, excursions, guys. Um, so much fun. Excursions. One time we went to a place called Twin Peaks. And I tell you what, I got the education of a lifetime. The, the, the Fitzy and Whipper podcast. Let's talk about school trips, school excursions, because they are getting quite expensive now. Our mum over in the UK, she's shattered. I mean, she's just getting back from the pandemic. Her kids are at school. She said, I'll do anything to support my kids, but this is just getting crazy now. We were quick yesterday, but not no. so fast this morning. So it's the <laughs> grab, I think. It doesn't Macca. sound like a mum in the UK. It sounds like a local Aussie bloke. About to have a spew. So, let's have a listen. I had an email from the school this evening about my eldest going on a school trip for two weeks in 2024 to an amazing part of the world, but it's three and a half grand. Ooh. I am everything for my kids, so I will work two, three, four jobs if I have to to pay for this trip. However, we are currently, the UK is in a mess right now, and there are, there are going to be plenty of families who cannot afford this sort of money to go on a school trip. And I don't think it's fair for the kids to already be briefed about this amazing trip before the parents. That's a good point, it isn't is it? a good point, the yeah. kids should not be briefed first, because mm. there's obviously some kids that will not be able to go. And this is not just, we're not talking about elite private schools here. It's a two-week trip. State secondary schools all around the country, this is happening everywhere. And there, you know, there's netball trips, there's sporting mm -hmm. trips that they're going on as well, and it's costing a lot of money. You know what's going on at my school too, and the amount of the emails that come through from a school is extraordinary. It's crazy, isn't it? Are and you in the WhatsApp group? No, I'm not in the what oh, Lisa's in the WhatsApp group. I stay out of the WhatsApp not. group. BJ shows me some yeah. rippers. <laughs> yeah, it's a good little uh, good little parental group there. But what happens is they do excursions, which is great, but we also get emails about incursions. Now, when I was at school, an incursion was just a, another day at school where you'd go to a different part of the school, but yeah. if you go into the main oval or something, or they're off to, to the library, well, parents, please note that tomorrow your kids are having an incursion. Are you kidding? Oh. They're still on the property, though. <laughs> that's a staycation. That's, that's ridiculous. I, that's what I thought. You're allowed to go from one location to the other. <laughs> I mean, these are the expensive ones. What we want to do on the Fitzy and Ripper show, we want to celebrate the horrible excursions that you had at school. Oh, yeah. We had Flaxmill Primary School, and, and I mean, we didn't go too far. Do you know what we had? The, the, the best thing about our primary school, we had the local dentist at our school. Mm -hmm. So all the other schools used to come to our school to go to the dentist, Sarah, mm, which, wasn't, which wasn't exciting for us because mm. we didn't get to leave. All the other kids were like, wow, this is a new school. We we didn't. I remember we had a lazy teacher once who um, who actually took us to the southbound gym that was only 800 metres down the road to teach, us, to teach us about the fitness industry. Okay. And that was our excursion for the day, so we had to get permission from the parents. And I remember going in there, and it just stunk of BO. Oh. There was only one guy working out who was in a FUBU tracksuit, <laughs> sweating like with a pig. A, with a bum bag and on. And there was just a group, a class of kids just watching him work out all the time. My best mate and I actually, we ended up going to there for for our year 10 uh, work experience. Oh, yes. <laughs> awesome. oh, time because well we were so lazy, <laughs> we yep. left it too late. And in the last week, they said, what are you two doing for work experience? And we just made up on the spot, Southbound Gym. Yeah, we're selling we're selling steroids with that guy in the truck suit. So you know, we had a guy at school and his dad worked at the Ford factory, right? This was in Melbourne, making cars. So every year, we went to the Ford factory. And don't get me wrong, like having a look at the assembly line was... was uh, yeah. uh, is there, oh, oh, look at it. Oh, that's where it's painted, is it? Okay. And then it was... I remember this year came around and we had an exclusive 
exclusive invitation to go along to the Ford factory as they roll out a brand new car for the first time ever. It was all over the news and we were kind of waving in the background. It was the Ford Capri. Oh, uh, well, you which, were there for the which, unveiling. Uh, for the unveiling of the world famous Ford Capri, wow. which probably should have just rolled back onto the truck and gone away forever because <laughs> it didn't last long. Megan in Engadine, uh, what was your school excursion, Megs? Hi. Um, when I was in primary school, they told us we were going on this super exciting excursion and it was going to be so much fun and we were all going to love it. Popped on the bus, got to Bilo, um, which is where they were taking us, which used to be Coles back in the Yeah, um, yeah, Bilo, the half case warehouse Bilo, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep, so Bilo was our school excursion. They brought us down all the aisles, showed us how they set up the store, <laughs> brought us out the back and showed us all the storage, then brought us into the meat locker, and all the kids were gagging. It was so disgusting. <laughs> I don't think I've touched meat since. I've been like, That's start. extraordinary. And that was it's our an excursion. excursion. This is David. He's just started here. He is just unboxing the canton. <laughs> wow. How do, you, how do you do it, David, and how long you been stacking for? Um, <laughs> come and have a look. I love that you described it as a... Girlfriend, she... Oh. <laughs> oh, come on. I love that. I love that it's referred to as a meat locker. Yeah. I didn't know Christ. that. Wow, let's, how hot. Let's go to Neo now from Bill Gola. Hi, Neo. Hi. Hi. How old are you, Neo? I'm 10. 10. Oh. And okay. what, what was the bad school excursion that you had to go on? So, I, um, so we went to Narrabeen. Sports Centre, yeah. and they said it was going to be like really fun. And we didn't get to go on the high ropes because too apparently they were too dangerous, so we oh. had to go on the low ropes, which was really boring. Oh, yeah. man. That's tough, isn't it? Did, yeah. Did anyone get in their trouble, Neo, because it was so boring? Were you trying to make some fun yourselves? Yeah, a bit. Yeah. People were like kind of messing around a bit on the low ropes. <laughs> You'll get that. Funny. that. That I yeah. mean, if you've got to make your own highlight on an excursion, it's a disappointing excursion, isn't it? Oh, it's, Remember, it's, I told yeah. you we, we went to the National Gallery once, and a bloke by the name of Dave shot the BB gun into the Pioneer painting. Well, how did he get a BB gun into the oh, National no. Gallery? A different time, back 30 then, years mate, ago. Straight down in the pocket, straight down the front of the pants, whatever. And there was a BB gun pellet, oh. a little plastic orange pellet stuck in the Pioneer. What? The whole school went into shutdown and meltdown over this, and we got booted out of the National Gallery. How much did that cost to buy that kid back into the school? No, they bought the painting up against it. Yeah. <laughs> so quite and a lot. donated it back. Inga's giving us a call from Penrith. Inga, school excursion. Uh, we went to the sewage treatment work. Oh, no. Seriously? Okay. What are you learning there? Uh, it was Year 11 Biology, and I'm not exactly sure about oh. smell, maybe. Oh. That would have been disgusting. So they showed you how different parts separate and the, yep. and oh. the treatment process? I bet you would have been testing the water, wouldn't you? Uh, yeah, I could. no, we didn't do that part. We just got to see different parts of the process, and Ugh. I still remember the smell to oh, this day. Just floating. Oh, mm. Inga. Oh, that so is, bad. how do you go wow. home working, uh, working huh. at the sewage treatment mm. plant? How do you go mm. home with your clothes? Tommy, that's not your wife, Inga, is it? It's not, no. My <laughs> wife, it's, it's a different Inga, not at a sewage plant. Oh, because <laughs> you told her to go and get a job there. <laughs> she... I mean, she deals with smells like that constantly at home, the poor bugger. She hasn't recovered. Sahar's given us a call from Heathkit. What was the awful school excursion? We were supposed to go to um, Cadbury Chocolate Factory. It was the most exciting day of a calendar, school calendar year. Every year we were going there. Yeah. Not my year, but the schools are going there every year. Uh, don't know what happened with the buses. I think something is stopped up and we end up in a cardboard factory. <laughs> cardboard <laughs> factory. At Vizzy. Yeah, like 15 minute drive from the school uh, as opposed to <laughs> one hour, two hours drive from the school. Uh, yeah. <laughs> See, because the, is... the Cadbury factory as well, on the way out, you get all the. You all get the all, offcuts. Of the offcuts, the yeah. ones that they can't. Absolutely. Actually... Yeah. You... Uh, you could eat as much, apparently, but allegedly. I've oh. never been there. How, uh, how exciting getting a shoebox on the way out the door, though, Sarah. Sahar. 
I was so young even to appreciate the value of boxes. If it was now, I would just take as many for my shoes and, you know, stuff. But, well, yeah, as follow. a year seven student. <laughs> oh, no, I hear you, sister. I get it. Let's go to Michael now in Lilyfield. Good morning, Michael. Hi. What's what ha- going on, What Nick? happened on the school excursion, mate? So we are on to, like, an education thing about Australia education and how, like, the history has gone through the years. Yep. And what happened was on the way there, um, one of the kids was eating in a cu- eating a cucumber and he threw it out the window. Yep. Oh, no. And, well, the cops saw it and they pulled us over. Oh, no. <laughs> no. What happened, Michael? Well, the cops pulled us over, um, told the teacher, I think, they gave um, the kid a fine, yep. about hundred bucks for littering. Oh, no. oh, and then were you able to go on your way, or did you have to pick up the cucumber? Or um, we we're able to go on our way, but the kid got into serious trouble. So oh, awesome! That's what a lunchbox, a that's whole a, cucumber. Yeah, oh, lazy mum. <laughs> Do you know? Can lazy. I, just say as well? I mean, cucumbers, they oh, terrible. They're degradable, aren't they? Yeah, they're smashed. They're water, fine. of course. Yeah. Fine. Of course, and a cucumber, like it. Don't ask for the watermelon. Um, <laughs> Ashley Ash. in Wollongong, what was your bad school excursion? Hi, so um, when we were in about year two, we went out to the local botanical gardens, which is lovely, but the guide gave us a tour and um, basically was telling us about all the local wildlife and fauna. And then he proceeded to tell us about the breeding seasons of magpies, which was happening, and how a little boy our age had had his eyes pecked out in the park we were sitting in. Awesome. I mean... <laughs> Just great. I mean, that's a guy who's bored with his job. Isn't it? I need to... Oh. I, yeah. Was he wearing he was goggles? messing with us. Oh, that's funny, Ash. Thanks right. for your call. Mel's in... Uh, Mel from Northmead. Uh, terrible school excursion. Mel, what happened? Yeah, so I didn't grow up in the city. I grew up um, up in northern New South Wales in good old Mullumbimby. Oh, yeah. great. Here area. we go. Yeah. But um, during uh, the mid-'80s, it was uh, more known for being a farming area, bananas and dairy and things like that, and we went on a school excursion to an abattoir. Oh, so you didn't get to see everything, did you, Mel? We absolutely did. On that particular oh, no. day, um, they were um, turning pigs into pork. Oh, oh my gosh. For the kids, was there anyone crying? Anyone upset, Mel? Uh, there definitely was, and I was one of them. I think it took about 20 years for me to eat pork or ham or bacon again oh. because if, if that first bolt doesn't work, it's not very nice. Oh, oh wow. Mel. We went from where they were using the bolt guns, for want of another term, yep. into the room where they actually, because pigs are very hairy and very bristly and they've got to burn off that that hair and then where they cut them up and, and then even into the tanning room, yep. which is putrid. Yep. All the detail that you went through, you're giving it to the listeners right <laughs> now, Mel. So anyone else listening has lived through you, Mel. And did you get a meat tray on the way out the door? Oh, jeez. Um, no, we didn't. Oh. I went to an abattoir once, right, when I was younger, and there was I got introduced to a guy who was the best. Uh, they said he was the best known in the abattoir with a knife. Right. And what they, they were saying to me, what this guy can do with a knife will blow your mind, because he'd been doing it for years. What did he do? The guy turned to me and he said to me, if you ever need to get rid of a body, I can do it. Oh, are you kidding me? <laughs> and I was like... Is he serious? <laughs> I got really, really upset. So we won't see Whipper tomorrow. How good is that? How good is that? Tommy, you know what you didn't say to Mel? You could have jumped in there and told the story about the girl you met in the hot spa at Mullumbimby. Oh, oh, yeah. Oh, no, was, was she a hot. pig? Oh, you, you, she was a pig. <laughs> but I thought that was about to turn into an avatar. Oh. <laughs> I didn't call her a How pig. did she describe pigs? I not call her a Harry pig. Hairy and... Hairy and... You've got, you've got, to, you've yeah. got to burn the hair off Tom's back. Yeah, that, that is <laughs> ridiculous. She hey. made the most of that one. What if.com is all about helping Aussies make the most out of every trip. Book a hotel, flight, surfboard and snorkel all before you can say brekkie buffet. Jump online or on the What If app and get started. What If? It's Aussie for travel. Uh, I want to talk about Lenny, <laughs> nine-year-old. Um, we love Lenny because he's a little bit different. I hope you do. 
do. Um, oh. Yeah, no, yeah, sometimes. They're, they're very different, though, aren't they, kids? Well, yeah, this is like, the thing. Lenny's it, very different to Huey, isn't well, he? Oh, very different. Huey's v- very reserved, um, and, and Lenny just, he wants to tackle anything. He's into boxing at the moment, so I'm going to actually take him to a, a couple of boxing classes, mm-hmm. and he's showing me different combos and all this kind of stuff. We had both mums up on the weekend. They were here helping BJ out with a vintage. They yeah. went saw to, that. to that the big awesome. market. Yeah, they've got black eyes. Yeah. Um, so um, they had a great weekend. And, you know, the mums, the, the worst thing is when you've got grandma there, it's that, that you, the kids know that if they massage them enough, they're going to get a gift out of them every time they see yeah. them. All right, so I think my mum got Lenny something at some stage, and then BJ's mum, my mother-in-law, Chris, said, "Okay, um, this is your opportunity. Whatever you want, we're at Broadway Shopping Centre. What do you want?" And Lenny goes, "This is what I really want." And I, we had to get permission from mum and dad if it was okay to do this. And I said, "You know what? He's his own man. Let go him go. It. He can <laughs> he can do whatever he wants. You're not going to stop him." So I'm going to put up a photo now. He got a piercing. He got a piercing what? in his ear and in his the septum of his nose. A proper piercing no. or is that a clip-in? It's a clip-in. He did not get a piercing <laughs> through his nose. No, that's a joke. I, jo- I oh joked my about, God. I joked about the nose. Oh that, my God. that was from mum's hen's party there with a yeah, the little well. penis earring. <laughs> no, that is a penis, is it? No, but he did. <laughs> I didn't know what to say. He did. Oh God. He did get... A piercing in his ear, Sarah. Whereabouts? So, um, there it is there. Ooh. And he's got a beautiful diamond stud. Are they it's, real? No, it's a cubic zirconia. Okay. Um, but this is what Lenny wanted. Is he allowed Ooh. to go to school with that? Well, yes, he is, because someone else in his class, uh, another little mate of his, has it as well. We're in a bit of trouble because apparently now all the other boys in the class want no. this. That's the issue. So he, he went back yesterday. But I don't know. Is it too young to get a piercing? I never thought about it. Oh, I, I just, I love his. I just love how he wants to try things. He knows what he wants, isn't he? He's committed to how he feels and what he likes, oh, and like and really s- decisive. And Sarah, if this was Huey, Huey would be like absolutely no chance. He would be yeah. like worried about the way he's going to be perceived at school. Yeah. But Lenny, Lenny owns it. He's like, yeah, bring it on. Good I want to do it. He watched a girl get her ear pierced before he had it. And he just, he stood there and went, yes, that is exactly what I want. And I went, that's what I love about it. That's the thing. You want to celebrate that individualism, if that's a word. Um, And I, it wouldn't fly in our house. Like, we're not getting earrings. Why not? Because it's just, it's not for me. Call me old school if you want. I don't Didn't like earrings. Did you get an earring? Yeah, but I was 19 at the time. So mm. I learnt my lesson the hard way because I didn't like it once I'd done it. Well, this is what I thought as well. You know, if he doesn't... It's such a fine line, isn't no, it? No, no, you just take it out. It well, just that's... closes up. I had to yeah. re-pierce my ears on the weekend because they'd closed up. Mum said to me on the weekend she was going to get her ears pierced. She was thinking about it. Yeah. Mum has got her ears pierced. Can I, can I just throw... The, how, how, what's the youngest someone has been? Babies, well, a lot they of, do a babies. Lot of babies. Do, they do, they do yeah. babies? Yeah. Especially Jeez. different religions as well. Wow. Yeah, so he's rich. Yeah, it's fine. But he's, yeah, it depends what look you want. It's and better the than hardest it's part is, I, I, um, don't worry. I have. I come from the background that you come from, mate. If I get my, it. If I, I get said it. that to my old man when mm. I was nine years of age, there is absolute. No chance I could have got an earring. Mm. But you know what? I just went, he just wants to be the man that he wants to be. So hang on, did he get two or just one? No, just one. Okay. It's the same as tattoos. I mean, my cousin got a tattoo when he was quite young. And I said to him, look, I don't have an issue with the tattoo. My problem is that other people have issues with tattoos. So I've got an issue with them because I think you can judge very quickly and you judge very easily somebody with tattoos, especially Mm. when they're young. And quite often people don't stop at just one tattoo. So that's what you need to be aware of. And depending on what you want to do when you're older Mm. and what field you want to be in, the tattoo might be suitable or it might not be suitable. Mm. So that's why you need to consider those things when you're getting something permanent like that. Well, Tommy, that bleaching that you got when you were six, I thought that was a bit full on. But yeah. you were da- your just dad said you go for it. No one could see it anyway, could they? <laughs> and the Prince Very Albert. Good. No, I did no, not. Off get the it. school bus, I didn't though. Know. It was spectacular. <laughs> so did the school <laughs> say anything about? <laughs> did the school say anything about the earring? No, we haven't heard. We haven't heard. 
The mullet's gone. The rat tail's gone. Right, yeah, 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 yeah. Because you, yeah. It's, it's such a fine line because you do want to celebrate that kid for who he is. Oh, I agree. And you want to encourage him to be exactly who he is. Oh. But as a parent, you're still driving that train. It's so not you, permanent. It's, 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 it's not he, permanent. It's yeah, not don't permanent. Just oh, no, as no, an no. example for any other parents out there, we're a strictly no video game household. So yeah. there's no Playstations, there's no Xbox. And I feel really bad because Lenny is constantly... Because all their mates do. He is presenting to us. I am the only one in class, Dad, that mm. doesn't have one. And he always wants to go around to his friend's house because he knows he can play video games. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, and I feel bad sometimes, but I'm like, nah, this is one thing that I feel is good for you and you'll understand when you're older yeah but with something like this my old man instantly would have gone absolutely no chance and i just went ah, you know what if he doesn't like it he can yeah. take it out there and Who i cares? thought he, yeah but he loves it he's owning it that's Perfect. what i love about him um <laughs> we went to leave the house the other day and ted goes i'm not ready yet I went, oh, yeah, what's happening? What, he had a piercing downstairs? No, he didn't have a piercing downstairs. <laughs> he said, well, I haven't got my hat on backwards or my sunnies on. And I went, oh, oh, all right. Hat backwards. Yeah, well, you go for that, mate. But I remember when I pierced my ear, and I would have been 18, 19, as I said, and I went out for dinner, and I was sitting there, and Mum knew about it, but I had long hair that sort of covered it, yeah. and then I put it back and waited for Dad to notice, oh. and he saw it because it was like a hoop. It was like a hoop in the top of my ear. Oh. That's oh, terrible. God, it's Jack Sparrow. Oh, my God. It was... <laughs> what do you call them? What do you call a... Ugly. No, a ring. A, a cuff. A cuff. A sleeper. Oh, sleeper. oh yeah, you sleeper. Sleeper. Yeah. Right? So then... Then he put you to Dad sleeper. Dad finally looked at it and he went, right. And this is this is exactly how we spoke. It was really quiet in this restaurant. Sort of candlelit restaurant. Right. No son of mine will have an earring. Oh. Can you give me a double scotch on the rocks, please? Oh, no, come in. no son of mine. mine He's only got it. one. Will Eerie. Not that one. Not that. How many have you got, Dad? That's what I found out. You've been seeing someone else. <laughs> the Fitzy and Whipper podcast. Guys, I need your help here. A fair bit of pressure mounting at my place. And there's been whispers and they've been talking about wanting one and all this sort of gear. And then yesterday, Ted came in from the out the front and he said, you know what, Dad? We're the only house in the street that doesn't have a dog. Are you, though? I mean, that's just... He's good plan by Jack. Isn't it? Just yeah. to come in and just... He's playing me beautifully. Yeah. They both are. And what we do... Like, I've been trying to manage it, and I would love to have a dog. I love dogs. Growing up, we had dogs. And it's just, to me, like, we've still got a two-and-a-half-year-old in mm. nappies. Why do I need another baby? Mm. And I love the idea of how you bond with a dog. As, you know, little boys and dogs, it's great for them, yep. you know, and it and it can teach them a gentle side as well, yeah. and it teaches them about the bond and the friendship and also the responsibility, which we keep bringing up. Yeah, when you can walk that thing around the park by yourself, go for it. Why don't you start with a guinea pig or something for the I kids? I thought about that because yeah. we've... I don't know why. We've got two ducks in the backyard at the moment, Suntan and Jerry is what they're called. Oh, so what, they hang around the pool. Yeah, they do. They poo in the pool. They poo in the pool. It's awesome. They poo everywhere. When Lisa said... It's not Wayne Carey. No, it's it's not. Okay, sorry. Because I found some anti-inflammatories. We put it in the bread (laughs) just to make sure the ducks hasn't got any swelling around the hips. Wayne Carey's doing another poo in our pool. Can Mm. you get... Ah, friggin' hell. Sorry. Wayne, if you wouldn't mind, mate, if you could put some Speedos on and leave. (laughs) Come out the front, mate. It's been three weeks. His nickname's Ducks there. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah, I I'm get sorry. It. Yeah, no, anyway, um, so we've got Suntan and Jerry that float around, and Lisa fed them six months ago and they haven't left. But what they do, they'll stand at the back door, they poo everywhere. So my job on the weekend, and you know what? I don't pick it up fresh. I wait for it to dry. It goes into sort of like a bit powdery, and then I just brush it off. Okay. Lovely. Yeah. So the germs are still just the there, but you've still brushed there. away the residue. A dog will get rid of the ducks. Yeah, for sure, which poo. I'm all right with that. But then I thought maybe we get our own ducks. Jack, who's like, Jack's the animal guy. Jack, like, we read about animals nonstop. He draws animals. He's obsessed with them. He wants mallard ducks. Mallard ducks are those ones with, like, green heads. Oh, you know they're, those Yeah, ducks? they're quite cute, aren't they? So then I'm on eBay and I'm looking and I'm gum, like gum oodle, tree. They're like the oodle dog, aren't they? Designer. Yeah, they're, they're designer. Designer ducks. Duck. Designer ducks. But that's the other thing. Every time, like, I talk about getting a dog and they talk about their favourite dogs and what they like and, you know, we've got Bailey down the street. Bailey comes round to our place and we shut the front gates and Bailey plays in the backyard with the kids. Then we've got Hershey across the road. So I'm borrowing all oh, these dogs. the highway. Yeah, <laughs> 
Wowzers. We've got Hershey. Hershey's mm-hmm. a what? A dog? Hershey's a gr- <laughs> Hershey's a groodle. Ah. Oh. And Hershey's like a lion. Hershey's massive. Then we've got Hugo, the golden retriever, who came round and ate all the sandwiches. Whips, I would say no. And I love dogs. Fitz, you know how much I love dogs. But no, do you know what? All weekend I walked around saying to Gary, why does the house smell like urine? We figured out that Winnie had slept in my jacket and wiped his doodle all over my the uh, like Gary the, had the um, oh, no, no. Of oh, my sorry, the dog had. had obviously right. no the if dog it, had. If you're just tuning in, Sarah's talking about the dog. <laughs> the dog had obviously leaked a bit on my jacket, oh, so the bit near Sarah. my face stank of urine. Yeah. Similarly, and when I got in the spare bed last night, as we played bed, you know, movements because the kids move yeah. around at night. So was this Gary or the dog now? <laughs> Look, and we're off to the vet because the dog's eye has split open again, so that's full of pus. And And he's got an ear infection. You know the other thing? You've got a lot of white furniture too. There's a lot of of pressure also when I say to somebody, I'm thinking about getting a dog, and they go, oh, there are so many good rescue homes to get dogs from. And I'm like, oh, I don't want a sad one. They're not sad because oh you've come God. in. Like, Are I you serious? I'd like to build the emotional bond from puppy stage. We've well, got to uh, rescue your dog as kids, and it was awesome. Yeah, and you and can it's... get puppies if that's your, your. Yeah, but you know, you go there and they've got the sad eyes, and you go, that's fine for somebody that's lo- that might be a little bit sad as well, looking but to you know bond what? with someone. A rescue someone. dog is actually yeah. better for kids because you're doing, you're actually teaching them a story, and you know yeah. what? They you do are. see the sad eyes, mm. that they're changing the dog. You dog's can change life. it. You're right. And There's with... a beautiful story to it. There's every... a heartfelt story for it. Every time you get home from work and you have haven't walked the dog, you'll get sad eyes. Every time they want food, you'll get, get sad, sad eyes. eyes. Doesn't matter where they're from. God. You and don't then the need other this day, in your life. You were in here, Fitz, talking about anal glands. Yeah. And I'm oh, like, thank God you <laughs> you've got your dog stick on your I've, jacket. Yeah, and you've got rough, anal glands over here. <laughs> I've had a rough couple of weeks. <laughs> <laughs> The Fitzy and Whipper podcast. What do you do when your mum and dad, and maybe it happened on the school holidays, say, hey, why don't you, why don't you come into work with me? Why don't we go and just oh, come yeah, and hang out in the works. office or you can come and do a little bit of work or, oh, you know. My old man was a sparky and yeah. I had no interest at all. Just going into huge mm. businesses, just into... Hold the ladder for me, oh, would you, Ryan? Mate, it was horrible. Hold the ladder! What if your name is Lenny and you're 18 and your your mum is Heidi Klum? Well, that means oh, you've got to yeah. go to work with mum. And she's done that. It's a lingerie issue. Is she physically blessed She as looks well? incredible. She's absolutely stunning. Oh, wow. Okay. Absolutely is that Seal's stunning. daughter? Yes. Right. Is it? Yes. Does she have kids with anyone else? Oh, Says you're the question. gossip person. It's a great question. I mean, Lenny this is for... So... A range of lingerie, How some lingerie. Heidi Klum now? She's forty nine. Is she? Heidi Klum. She looks like she lives the ultimate life. Oh. Isn't she recently remarried? Yes. I don't know if she I remarried. That, did she? she remarried to that bodyguard. That younger guy almost looks a bit Jason Momoa. Mm. He's helped. Seal, well. Seal wasn't happy, was yeah, he? Yeah, so Seal has four kids with her. Yeah, I think he's the father to all the kids. Seal, remember, oh, we've had a couple of doozy interviews with the old Seal Meister, didn't we? Mm-hmm. He's lovely. He just likes a bit of Seal. He, Seal loves a bit of Seal. Extraordinary yeah. fan of the Seal. Oh. Remember, but good to talk to. Remember he, Very he, generous in conversation. He had the camera around his neck, remember? And he, he just takes photos. He's a photographer and he was going mm. through them with us one day. But when he enters the room too, <laughs> everything is so fitted. Yes. And the day he had his camera strapped across his chest fits when we walked in. Have you He got... was there in a, a very tight leather pant and a very, very tight leather jacket. This is a tough one to find, Macca. See if you can. Kiss from a rose sung by a pack of seals. <laughs> Remember we've played yeah, that. Yeah, so you have. can continue with this break if you want. But. Right. Okay, what are you saying, Sam? She's adopted and the her three younger siblings are um, biologically. So she's she, Heidi and, and Seal adopted Lenny. And then the next three, the, um, Heidi gave birth to. Isn't that amazing that she's so stunning? Wow. Well, I thought they looked alike. So, <laughs> so did I. 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 So did I. Yeah. I mean, what are the chances that mum, who's naturally beautiful, I know, has adopts did, a child did, that's naturally was, beautiful? So Seal would have been the father for so her. So Seal's gotcha. the father of her four kids, but yeah, but the first uh, eldest was adopted. She hasn't had much cosmetic surgery, Heidi Klum, has she? No, she is amazing to look at. What about the daughter? Uh, Lenny, I doubt she would have had work done. She's 16. Okay, we've 18. tracked down Kiss 18. from a Rose, sung by a Seal. By us. <laughs> what? <laughs> oh. 
three minutes ago, I was talking about going to work with your parents. But... <laughs> Look at He's lost it. Man, someone's got too much time on that. <laughs> Thanks for joining us, Seal. Well done. And well done to Heidi for the photo shoot. You're listening to the Fitzy and Whipper podcast. Lights, camera, clarity. Top trending stories in entertainment just happening. Kanye West has posted a rambling 30-minute YouTube no. video where he is playing pornography for Adidas executives before slamming them for stealing his designs. Playing them pornography? Yes, on his phone. I would play you the audio, not of that, but of the exchange, but it's so warbled and odd that it, all you hear, or you, they've put subtitles on it so you understand what everyone's saying, but it's it's actually a little bit I don't, I don't understand. So is he showing them pornography on the phone? Or? Yes, and one of them keeps pushing the hand away saying stop that's enough stop it stop it oh yeah and um yeah no they're not hovering around his phone enjoying it they're all sitting it's in a bit of a circle some. and he's showing it's not a kim's home video I is it they've not. got to cut him don't they Oh, for sure. You would think he's gone. Adidas. Yeah. Absolutely. Has to be. Meanwhile, Kim at the same time was at the uh, LA Rams game against the Dallas Cowboys. Have a listen to this audio, which I do not support booing. I just think it's so low. And the screen on the on the big screen has gone to John Legend and then to Kim, and you can pinpoint when that happens. Booing in sport is one thing. Booing at an individual who you're not there to see is another. Well, she's just sitting there with one of her kids watching the game. Like, leave her alone. She was on the court. What was it? What game was it? It was the Rams versus the Cowboys. She was there trying to take selfies. Yeah, but she's sitting in a box with her kid, John Legend, a few other people. Like, just okay. why do you have to give her a okay. hard time for it? Feels love unnecessary. John Legend. The crowd loved John Legend. Yeah, they did, didn't Happy they? Happy with John Legend. Guys, Christian Bale has revealed that um, American Psycho, which you would sort of argue was, I guess, was it his launching film? I mean, he was in some other stuff. Yeah, I, think I think that I was, saw it. It's, oh, it's a really it's, good film. It's full on. Yeah, yeah right. it is, but it's really, I, I don't know, I thought it was pretty impressive. Anyway, he has revealed that he got paid less than the makeup artists on that film despite being the star of the movie. He said they paid him the absolute minimum wow. and he said he was sharing, he was living in a house with his dad and his sister that was getting repossessed and he was actually struggling to get that, you know, to save the situation because of how little they were paying him on the but, movie. See, this is how they all start as well. you got to start down low. Oh, didn't um, Jonah Hill ask Martin yes. Scorsese with The Wolf of Wall Street, I'll do it for free. Yep. I want to do that character for I, I want to work with Leonardo. Mm. Hey, just on Christian Bale and Leonardo DiCaprio as well, he's just come out, Christian Bale, and said, Everyone that I, every one of my roles that I get in Hollywood now, it's because Leonardo DiCaprio says no to it. Yeah, so the <laughs> role for this film, Patrick Bateman, the character, apparently it starts with Leo said no to that role, so Christian Bale got it. He, no. And he's being honest. I always get what Leo says no to because they he's always first choice and he understands why he's the best actor in the world but he's like it's just I always get his off cuts <laughs> yeah but you know not a bad position to be in at the same time if you really wanted a film you'd just call Leo and go mate just say no yeah, you yeah. pass I'm Can really you knock into that it. one back for <laughs> us yeah imagine sitting down with your manager and going okay so what has Leo said no to this year <laughs> yeah. that we can have a crack at or you just say to Leo can you just post me all the scripts you don't like yeah. thank you hey George Clooney and Julia Roberts they're starring in this new film together, Ticket to Paradise. Good one to take your mum to. It looks like a fun rom-com. Anyway, the two of them obviously have been friends for about 20 years, but in this film they have to make out. And uh, and it was particularly uncomfortable for the two of them, especially when George's wife and kids came on set. It is when my wife and kids come by to visit. Remember? Kids, that was the first day they came to visit. It's like, Papa, oh, and Juju. It's like, ah, get him out, get him out. out. <laughs> it's really bad. What are you doing, Papa? What is that? No, they didn't, they no, didn't they see they were, it. No, they were around. It's kind of ridiculous. Yeah. I mean, it, it is like kissing your best friend. And well, then, thanks for that. And then... You know, uh, a, you know I was a two-time sexiest then man you go, alive? Wait, my best friend's George Clooney. <laughs> yeah, come on, man. tune in a little bit. Do you know what? He, I wonder how many takes it would take. Like, if you were in that position, you'd be laughing the entire oh, you time. Would. I know, but you wouldn't want to keep redoing it. Even though you're no, an actor yes. and I know oh. they're so disassociated from that stuff, you'd sort of be like, well, surely we've got the take. Like, we'd we made need out. at least 30 takes, Tommy, I reckon. You and I? 
Us? Yeah, sorry. Tom had drifted <laughs> off into his own Sorry, land. I was just picturing oh, you and I doing a kissing no... scene in a film. Oh, I and how many times? We'd be giggling the whole way yeah, through it. So You'd get cute. a bit excited. Well, after the break. Oh! Hey. Yes. No, that's ugly. No one wants to see it. The Fitzy and Whipper podcast. I'll tell you what, band doesn't get much airtime here on Nova. <sighs> I don't know. Does it get any smooth air time, Tommy? Led Zeppelin, how oh, good is this? No, yeah. Fire it off, Macca. Bit of Stairway to Heaven. Oh, what a band. Oh, I think everybody of my um, age grew up trying to learn to play. This is one of their first songs on guitar. Got to interview Robert Plant for the project. And you know what? Everyone was freaking out going, mate, he's a, can be a really tough interview. And he was the loveliest bloke. And it kept going. He didn't want yeah. to finish. Mate, what a band. I mean, they revolutionised their live show and how they partied off the stage Massive. as well. Massive. Jeez, there's some big stories about Led Zeppelin. Oh, yeah. Hated the ladies. <laughs> I mean, if he had to settle for one per night, it was an issue. Um, what's interesting, Fitz, is you did mention that you sat down with Robert Plant one time. It was phenomenal. We've actually got some of that interview. Have a listen. Up and coming rock and roll bands that you really, really write. There's a band in Detroit called Greta Van Fleet. They are Led Zeppelin 1. Yep. The kid looks like he's just dropped out of a kind of a beautiful little singer. Yes. Very smart. I've seen them. Yeah. They're really, really young. Yeah. I've seen him. And I hate him. He has got such a huge voice, that young yeah, fellow. Yeah, and he me. borrowed it from somebody I know very well. <laughs> Yeah. But, I mean, what are you going to do? Okay, it's so okay. Have you, have, do you know, has he has he tried to meet you? Have you Has he been, have been re- requested? No, no, I mean, at least he's got a bit of style because he said he based his whole style on Aerosmith. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> you probably haven't heard that interview for a while. No. The great news is 250 million people just heard that interview because Howard Stern played it. What? They did their research because they were talking about Robert Plant, lead singer of Led Zeppelin. Here was the feedback after the interview was played. I don't know what one of them said. No, there were two guys, two guys talking over each other. What did they say? I don't even know. I just heard. <laughs> it was almost hard to tell when Robert was talking and when the other guy was talking and who was saying what. We got to get Robert by himself. <laughs> what did he say, Robin? You're pretty good at uh, listening. Well, he said there's a little band out of Detroit. You know, no, that I was think the that was right. the announcer. That was the announcer who said that. The, oh, the guy wait, interviewing him. Wait a minute, him. play it again. Now we got. No, play I, I, it I refuse. Again. I refuse to sit through it again. <laughs> who said they're Led Zeppelin one? That was the guy uh, interviewing him, interviewing Robert Plant. Then what did Robert no. Plant say? <laughs> that was Plant. <laughs> Oh, okay. that was planned. That's, yeah, I thought that was Robert saying those things. Uh, that guy wouldn't shut up and get the real reaction to Greta Van Fleet, but it doesn't sound like Robert appreciates it. Well, thankfully, J.D. is fluent in gibberish. <laughs> and was it because we were trying to play what will Robert Plant say, and we ended up playing what did Robert Plant say? <laughs> we have no idea. Here's a game where you try to figure out what Robert Plant's talking about while the announcer talks over him. Oh Howard Stern, I know exactly how you feel. <laughs> <laughs> the Fitzy and Whippers Show is a Nova podcast. For more great comedy shows like this, head to novapodcast.com.au.